Okay. Tell us about the clam. <laughs> well, there's not a lot to say, but what I was starting to say, the ones that get away, they're not like fish. They don't have tails, and they can't swim off. They can only go up and down. Hey, Mariners. I hope you're looking forward to your field trip to Tuckerton Seaport. When I was down there and saw all the equipment, I said, hmm, this looks a lot like my backyard. Um, this... Where, okay, Mr. Paul Bender, where are we going clamming today? We are, it's top secret. <laughs> You're not gonna, okay, is it on Barnegat Bay? Yes, it is. Okay, why don't you... It will be in This Barnegat. is a picture of the boat that Paul had when we were first married back in the 90s. It's a Garvey. It has a flat bottom, and he would pull the clam rake off of that. But we're not doing that today. Today he is going in his waders into Barnegat Bay. It's a secret wear. Okay. All right, baby. Thank you for letting me film you on our clamming excursion. Adventure. Adventure. So, baby, you don't do this for a living anymore. No, no. There are. There's hardly enough wild clamming. Um, to make it feasible. Do many people do it for a living nowadays in Barnegat Bay area? Not so much. Okay. Um, most everybody who's serious about it um, tends to grow their own now. With the aquaculture. Yes. Okay, Mr. So, Bender. So today you will be clamming with a rake. Yes, with a shinnycock rake, they call it. Okay, which we'll look or at. Or a bull rake. Bull rake. All right. Had you ever gone toe clamming? Yes. Back when you were a kid with your father? Well, a few times since then, but it's not for me. There's a, a lot of um, scary stuff on the bottom. Okay, so, so in toe clamming, you're barefoot? You're pretty much barefoot. And you're digging around for clams with your toes? Yes, off you the side walk the around until you feel them. Please. the rake in and now he's pulling it so he puts it in front of him and he pulls it and walks backwards digging and the rake digs into the mud for the clams all right this is as close as I'm getting because I'm not wearing waders I will All right, he's returning. Let's go see what he got. Friends. How many clams? Uh, there's probably 150 in this basket. Sweet! Mm. Delicious clams. Were you surprised to see that other clammer come into the water? I was surprised that I wasn't warned about him. I, what was it going to do, lay on the horn? Yeah. So, you have a bull rake, but he had a little, what kind of rake? A scratch rake. A scratch rake. So, how many clamps does a scratch rake hold? Um, they, they catch one or two at a time. Okay. One, one, onesies. 
onesies. So you catch one, put it in your basket, okay, go back in. For a little bit, the clams are in the garage. They will live here. The clams will live in the cold for several days. They're still alive. Sometimes you can hear them hissing and spitting. Let's uh, get one now and talk about it. Hey, Mr. Bender. It's hey. nice to be back in the warm Hi. and all cleaned up. So you have a fine-looking clam there. Why, yes, thank you. So you're not upset about that green bag busting and you losing a bunch of clams when you were doing it. Tell me why not. Well, the clam, he, uh, unlike the fish, doesn't swim away. He only digs down and then back up right where he was. So he's got a little foot that'll come out of there? He does. He does have a siphon that he uses to feed with. So the clams that you drop, they should be right in the same spot again. Yes, exactly. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Bender, okay. for taking us on your clam adventure today.